Welcome to Uncaged. Today we're speaking with Brian Longstreet. Brian is the Chief Operating Officer for Crixer Therapeutics. Now, we're going to be talking more about what Crixer does, but they're a transformative research-based biotechnology company with a groundbreaking in vivo gene editing therapeutic platform technology. Tell us a little bit about you and your career. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Um, so I've worked in the pharma and biotech industries about 30 years. I started my career in large pharmaceuticals or large pharma at a company called Shearing Plow, the makers of Claritin. And we then merged with Merck. And it really gave me a great sort of career foundation in sort of the large pharma environment to learn all the aspects of, of healthcare and pharmaceuticals and biotech. And it even gave me some unique opportunities. My family and I, we've lived in Europe twice for work and both were tremendous from sort of a personal and professional perspective. You, you get to see sort of the, the US from a different lens. So it was tremendous experience. And then over the past seven or eight years, I've transitioned into sort of the small to medium sized biotechnology space, which sort of gives me the ability to take everything that I learned in the large pharma space and then apply, apply it in the biotech space in a sort of a more accelerated fashion and impact, uh, which I really have enjoyed. Um, my wife and I, we currently live in Westfield, New Jersey, mm -hmm. which is right outside of New York City. We have three incredible children. The two oldest are girls, Haley and Avery, and they're in college down south in Clemson and University of Georgia. And our youngest, Brady, who's a boy, uh, is in uh, a high school. He's a junior. Oh, nice. Well, congratulations on your kids and heading for warm weather. <laughs> Smart kids. Absolutely. So, Brian, I love the background. Lifelong user of Claritin products. <laughs> but, I mean, now you're at Crixer Therapeutics. And this is a really interesting business. And you guys are doing some very, very interesting work in the biotech space. So, tell us a little bit more about what Crixer is up to. Yeah, so... I've been more recently working in the cell and gene therapy space, which is really exciting technology and it's very promising for patients as we move forward. It's sort of on the cutting edge of some of the, the areas in biotechnology. So Corixer, where I'm the CEO and, and help start, is, is an innovative gene editing company where we have in vivo gene editing technology, in vivo meaning in the body. There's both in vivo and ex vivo, and we are in vivo, which is unique, mm -hmm. and we're focused on solid tumors. So not mm -hmm. sort of blood tumors or liquid tumors, but solid tumors in the cancer space. And just we feel that in vivo gene editing has tremendous promise and potential in terms of targeting or correcting and knocking out various genetic mutations that drive sort of rare diseases and genetic diseases, cancers, and even, you know, places like in infectious diseases with high durability and efficacy. Yeah. So it, it's an early stage startup company, but there's a lot of potential for the company and the space in general. So, I mean, Gene editing seems to be one of these topics that has been building momentum over the last, I'd say, decade, but certainly over the last five years, it seems to be discussed quite a bit. Where do you think we are in terms of the adoption of some of these technologies? And you know, where does Corixer fall on that path? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the technology, again, as you aptly pointed out, was discovered about 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, which has been great. And, you know, from the respect that I think there's a lot of potential moving forward, there's sort of leaders in, in the space like CRISPR therapeutics yeah. or Intellia therapeutics and, you know, bringing products to market and for patients and helping patients is, is going to be sort of where the promise is. And I, I sort of akin it to um, Moore's Law with chips and technology, that you're gonna see this exponential growth in the area. 
Um, and it, it also, you know, comes with a certain amount of growing pains as well. You, you know, you need people at the regulatory agencies that understand the space that can help from a regulatory perspective, get these products approved as quickly as possible. You know, also looking at things at, at safety are extremely important, but it really is sort of one of the key areas in sort of personalized medicine as we move forward. And it, it's not only in healthcare, but you can use it in agriculture mm -hmm. and, and a variety of other spaces as well. And Corixer, we feel we're, we're well positioned because we're in sort of the in vivo gene editing, again, different from ex vivo, and we're targeting solid tumors, not, you know, liquid tumors or hematology. So, you know, we, we feel we're very well positioned as we move forward. Um, but it, it's yeah. a great space, a lot of promise and a lot going on in it. Yeah. Are you finding that, I mean, it sounds like Crixer has a very powerful, I'd say, targeted acute solution. You really have a solution that's very geared towards this in vivo and solid or hard tumors area. Is that really kind of the area we're seeing a lot of success with in the, um, I'd say, the gene editing space where you kind of have these executions, which are a little bit more deep into one specific challenge? I see that with other technologies. That's kind of why I was asking. Yeah, yes, I, I think that's a good way of characterizing. And I think a lot of sort of the area has been focused more in sort of the rare diseases like sickle cell anemia. You see Bluebird, um, which is a, an, another company in the space that has a, a technology approved there. And also sort of in, in the CAR-T area um, and, and around sort of the, the liquid tumors, multiple myeloma and other hematological disorders, where I think you're going to see it move is more to where we are, which is in the solid tumor space. So even yeah. some of these larger companies like CRISPR Therapeutics or Intellia, they have programs in both ex vivo and CAR T or also sort of the in vivo side. So you're going to see it continue to progress and develop. So, Brian, I'm going to change gears a little bit here because, I mean, you're clearly working on some cutting edge stuff now and you've been in the biotech space, you've been in the biopharma space. What gets you up in the morning? Why is this the area that brings you so much joy and where's the passion coming from? Well, it's just helping to sort of discover, develop and bring to market sort of new therapies that can either cure diseases or, you know, lessen sort of health complications in sort of today's society. When I, uh, I went to the University of Pennsylvania as an undergrad and when I was graduating, a lot of my peers were either going into the management consulting field or the finance field, um, which are interesting and important. Um, but I took a little bit of a different path and a little bit of a different direction and went into sort of the healthcare and life sciences space because I think helping helping patients is important to me. And, you know, the, the pharma and biotech industries continue to sort of evolve and grow and science and technology are evolving. You know, even yesterday, April 25th, which is a little known fact, was mm -hmm. uh, National DNA Day. Oh, and, and, and so what that is, is it sort of commemorates the seven Watson and Crick day, I guess. Yeah, correct. <laughs> correct. Look at you. Very good. <laughs> um, and then also the fact that it, it, it also is 20, the 20 year anniversary around there of the uh, human genome project and oh. the, the sequencing around it. So, you know, it, it, it's a fascinating field. I got in very early right out of college and learned the, the, the tricks of the trade and how to you know, be successful in the industry and the large pharma spaces we talked about, but where I feel I can make the biggest impact and what gets me up in the morning and really excites me is sort of the biotechnology space and the promise of things like personalized medicine and precision medicine. And it's, it's interesting when you look at you know, other areas in the space, like being able to detect cancer through you know blood or other sort of um elements um so it's it's just very interesting how it evolves and bio tissue printing and 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 different things like that artificial organs it, it's such an interesting space and and that's why it really excites me and even during challenging times like covid yeah. um you know good things came out of that like 
accelerated critical advancements in biotech like mRNA technology and also lipid nanoparticle delivery system. So a, a lot of good things came out of a, a big challenge. Yeah, I think a lot about that because I don't feel like that side of the story has been told and probably rightfully so because the focus has really been on the crisis as well as the victims, uh, you know, the people that the fatalities. But the reality is that what a moment of accelerated innovation. And certainly, I think hopefully we'll see a lot more accelerated innovation going forward. But with that in mind, Brian, I mean, here we are in a lovely year, 2023, lots of question marks around the economy in general. And I'd just be kind of curious what's on the docket for Carixer and really how do you see the market evolving this year? Yeah, so we've got a lot going on. I mean, we're moving, we're a preclinical stage company. So we're moving towards a pre-IND meeting with the FDA. We've already met with the FDA once for an FDA Interact meeting on our technology, but you go then to a pre-IND meeting, you file your IND, and then you move into the clinic and, and can be tested in humans. And that's what we're really working towards. That's sort of our inflection point as an organization. And we're hoping that we can get there as quickly as possible. But, you know, in, in today's environment, it, it's all about trying to get the best data, the best regulatory package that we can try to mitigate risks within our sort of clinical programs or preclinical programs, I should say, and, and move forward. And then the capital markets are, are always interesting as a small biotech company. You're, you're always you know, looking at your next sort of fundraising event. So it's also trying to plot that out as an organization um, in some very interesting times. Yeah, it's uh, certainly an interesting moment for you and the company. I mean, uh, the lovely FDA approval process and making sure that those hurdles are tackled, but certainly very promising technology here and certainly dealing with issues that really, really matter. If someone wanted to learn more about what you and the team are working on at Carixer, Brian, where's the best place to reach you? Uh, well, it would be, be on our website um, at the end of the day, and, and there's contact information there. But, you know, it, it has a lot about what we're doing. Um, and, and also, you know, anybody can look me up on LinkedIn and, and always willing to connect and, and you know, uh, be able to form a, a good connection with with other folks out there if they've got questions or interest in partnering or, or other or investing even though that that would be a good opportunity as well so you never know well there you have it everyone ryan we've been going through a lot of topics but clearly there's a business in growth mode and looking for those partners from an investment perspective but also anybody else that's really trying to push forward in this space. Brian, thank you so much for being on the Uncaged show today. We've been speaking with Brian Longstreet. He is the Chief Operating Officer at Carixer Therapeutics, which is a transformative research-based biotechnology company with a groundbreaking in vivo gene editing therapeutic platform technology. Brian, thank you so much for being on Uncaged and we look forward to having you back. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Cheers. Thank you.